Welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name's Michael and just behind me is Esme. So this is the first snow for 2020 where I live in kind of central Alberta, Canada. And we've already got, I don't know, about two, three inches already, somewhere around there. Uh, the ground is still not frozen, so it's kind of soft. Uh, so with snow and soft ground means <laughs> stuck times typically so i'm gonna to have to be a little bit careful today's trip is going to be a quick kind of hunting trip um camping overnight we've got the snow tracker tent which i love it's my traditional camping system with a hot tent and we're gonna actually have a look around and see if we can get some grouse uh, but we do have some backup plans normally when it's snowing like this there typically isn't much moving around birds especially they hate the uh they hate the weather, snow or rain. But we're looking forward to the trip. If you've been watching the channel a while, you'll know we've used the snow tracker quite a bit. And um, it just works. It's gonna be perfect for these conditions. A little bit, probably too warm. Uh, but we've got some cooking to do as well. So if you'd like to join us for the rest of the video, you're more than welcome. So we just stopped off this uh, clearing. I've been here a couple of times before, uh, but normally this is really kind of flooded out, uh, but it seems pretty good. Put pretty long grass on there, but this would be a great place to camp. We'll have to take a bigger drive around this field and see if we can find a nice spot. This might be a little bit too, it's kind of marsh ground. And in a hot tent that starts to warm up, We'll be in a bit of trouble. So this is one of the beauties of having a full cab is you're not in a rush. Like it doesn't matter what's happening outside, it's heated, which is really nice. I guess it's an extra plus, but even just a sealed cab would be good on a lot of machines. Uh, but the HT model, HD10 model, uh, it's the XT cab. Um, comes all this fitted, it's insulated roof, doors, everything. And obviously it has the heater and it keeps the windscreen clean too. And obviously a wiper. Um, but yeah, it makes it so much more pleasant in the winter to get out and uh, explore. And obviously I have the track kit as well, the Apache 360 LT tracks, which will take me all the way through winter. So we're pretty much geared up for this point in time. So for viewers that have been watching a while, this is the trail that stopped my Can-Am Defender, this Can-Am Defender, with the tracks last year. This is the track I couldn't make it along because the snow is too deep. I managed to make it in probably about a third of the way I want to go to, but I've hit a big tree, which there's no way around it. Um, and I could remove it, if I'm honest. I have a chainsaw, but it's a lot of tree. Um, but I'm about a third way in the trail. This is gonna eat up a lot of my gas, my chainsaw, and I don't know how many further trees are down there. I need to come in for longer than just a quick overnighter to get past this obstacle. But I'll show you what we're up against and uh, let me know what you would do. Yeah, this is kind of a big tree. Like I said, I could probably cut it, use the winch, Get it out of the way. I'm not sure what's over the, the next 
couple of kilometers, I could be hitting 10 or 20 of these. So for today, I don't think we're gonna go to this camp. Let me find a little house. Any house? Any house? So this actually makes a really good temporary shelter. If I was in a bit of a bind, I would just knock off some of these smaller limbs. And you really don't have to do that much to it. Build a fire up the front here, careful not to set the tree on fire. And you could survive the night, it wouldn't be pleasant. But with very little resources, you could totally do it. It's all about staying up and uh, keeping the fire going. It really is, let's keep going. track so that'll be great for next time we go in there it'll really help um, we're going to try and get to our camp spot that we can't get to unless it's winter time maybe too early yet but there is a big swamp in the way that i'm hoping because the last ones we went through weren't uh soft we could just drive through we might be lucky so we're going to give it a go i know it's one of esme's favorite spots because it has the little river at the bottom so i think we're going to treat ourselves have the snow track a hot tent camp in one of our favorite spots and the only thing stopping us is this swamp. Mm. So I thought we were all doing too well. Got through the other swamp. Got a big old tree down. Well, it's not too bad. But we'll get down there, get that moved. I'm hoping because of the way it's bowed, it's not going to spring back too much. So I'll have to be careful with that. Okay, chainsaw time.
up, up. Come on. Well, we've made it to the old camp. Glad to see it's in good condition. There's still even some rounds of wood that I left from last year. So people were kind and left me a little bit. Do you still see my poles as well for the stove pipe to support it? I forgot to bring my snow shovel, uh, which is not cool, but the snow is actually quite light. I should be able to brush it away with my hands or feet or whatever. So I'm not too worried about that. So yeah, temperature is minus three, and I think it's going down to like minus 10 tonight. But yeah, this is one of my favorite spots, and really it's only accessible during the, the winter months. I was surprised we got in today, but it worked out. And we'll go down and see the river, see if Esme wants to dip her toes in the cold. Do you? You wanna go swimming in the cold? see what happens but I think what I'm gonna do first of all I think it's probably put the tent up there it is my little slice of heaven some people like beaches or people like cities this is what I like So that's the tent shell almost set up now. I'll probably have to go around and tighten those tie outs slightly once the tent settles, but it's very easy to set up. Let's go inside.
árboles. Qué bom. So we're almost all set, just the stove to go now. Uh, but it's nice to get the, the bed all set up. And it's really starting to snow now. <sighs> okay, a few minutes, get a stove. It's a lot of work winter camping. I think that'll work nicely. I think it's good enough. I don't want to get too close to any trees. But I'm happy with that. We're all set up. Time to light the stove. Actually split some wood first, I think. Well, I think that should do us. That's uh, plenty of wood for kind of zero, minus five, minus ten. Um, probably won't burn it all through the night. So we'll just use it for this evening, keeps up for the morning. And uh, that job's done. It's on to warm up quite a bit. Okay, let's get some tinder. So we've got our bundle of dry sticks. We're gonna start the fire with. I think I'll just separate it into half. You don't have to use it all, that'll save me a trip. Because then this will be for the morning.
So the stove is tilted slightly, which I need to correct because all the hot air will move towards this front section. And I want it to uh, exit cleanly out the back. Okay, that looks perfect. Some birch bark from my last trip. A little peanut lighter. I also have some resin as well. This is spruce resin, which I'm gonna put in the middle of that. Wood does feel a little bit damp actually. We'll give it a go. So the time is about 4.30 and we're all set up, the fire's lit, still have the front door open just letting out the, uh, the initial starting of the stove fumes. This means very comfortable in a spot. Melting, you're melting. And we've got a uh, T-bone steak tonight. Uh, we didn't see any grouse so I did bring some backup um, meat with me. So we got some steak so Asmi can enjoy the bone from that. And I'll make, I don't know what I'm going to make, steak stew, eh, not that different, <laughs> not that much different from chicken. I like stews. So we have Esme, have my cast iron cooking set, my small table I brought with me. I just got my boots drying off, they're actually working really well. There's a stove. I have my Helicon Tex kettle sat on top and uh, just warming some water. I can have a nice cup of tea later or coffee. Got my wood pile just in the corner. Have my Sportnir chair. And my one Tigris Esme blanket, which is just covering the floor at the moment. She doesn't need that. My Helicon Tex bug out bag, which is not called bug out bag, I always forget the name. Um, which is my basically my everything. So it's time for supper. I've had the cast iron pan on top of the stove for a little while. It's actually warm to touch now. And uh, had some small amount of oil. You can see it's running freely. So I do have this uh, Sterloin T-bone grilling steak that Esme and I are gonna share. 
I was going to make a stew and stuff, but I think just a steak would be great. I think I'll leave the, uh, the remainder for Esme. That's uh, quite the bone for a dog. You ready, Esme? So let's see how the steak tastes. Mm. That is beautiful. So I'm gonna finish up the steak. I'm gonna have a quick tidy round ready for the morning. I think then we're ready to actually relax and uh, hit the old sleeping bag. Looking forward to that part. So good morning everyone, we had a very comfortable night last night, Esme slept in the bottom of the sleeping bag and uh, obviously I slept at the top part, she's migrating her way up this morning but we have the morning bundle in and we have the, uh, the water on for a cup of coffee. So that's our next task and then some breakfast. So we are all packed up, ready to set off back to uh, the truck, but it's, uh, it's a hard place to leave. It's such a beautiful place here, um, but we've uh, stacked up some wood for next time. I'm sure we'll be back out soon enough. I hope you've enjoyed the video and until next time, take care.
And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.